just why? I really like Rick and Morty. It's one of my favorite shows, but the Rick and Morty style of humor only works in Rick and Morty, but I'll get into that later, but let it sink in. Trover Saves the Universe was developed by Squanch Games, formerly known as Squanch Tendo, which is the co-creator of Rick and Morty, Justin Roiland's game studio. When I was seeing the ads for this game, it looked like it would be a fun action platformer, and while it's an action platformer, you can see that it's done in a really weird way. Graphically, it looks like something from Rick and Morty. Trover looks like a purple Mr. Meeseeks. You can see that the art style and animation translates really well into 3D, and I really commend them for that. The voices are done pretty good, and Trover sounds like Morty, and the main bad guy and his clones sound like Rick, which really sells that this is by the same people type of thing. Unfortunately, the characters do not shut up at all. It's actually worse than Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric. Remember in that game where the characters would talk about rings or bounce pads or how the running sections were made for Sonic? Well, Trover will not stop talking about green power babies. This game's collectible. And sometimes the bad guy clones who are sitting and waiting for you to complete a task will just talk constantly without pause either. There was this one section where two enemies were talking about jumping off of a roof, then comment on something I was doing, and then back to talking about jumping off a roof and switching back and forth. As for gameplay, you are a character, a chair orphan, or whatever is controlling Trevor because he got tired of looking for you. Trover can jump and swing a sword attack. He also gets a double jump and a hover and a roll. You yourself get the ability to pop up two levels to see more of the land to control Trover, and the ability to grab and move objects and throw them. You have to get Trover to these little teleporters so that you can move to that spot. This aspect of the game is incredibly annoying. It makes the game feel very slow because it's an extra step that you need to take in order to progress. It also makes platforming challenging in the wrong way. Because of the fixed camera angle, you can miss certain platforms. I've played games with fixed camera angles before, like Omen Sight or Super Mario 3D World, but the camera in those games follows the character and will move to the best possible angle it can give because you, the player, are not able to control it. This setup really shows its limitations when you have to collect clone guts in a magic cauldron, meaning you have to move it from place to place with the right analog stick as clones come out to attack Trover, and you have to have him attack to get their entrails. In this scenario, Trover calls out to the clone so you can place the cauldron near them before they appear, allowing you to get set up. It's also bad because there's a character that comes up to your face and blocks you from seeing Trover and what you're doing. Thankfully, this only happens once, but it's more than enough. The story is that this Patrick Star reject stole your dogs. He put them in his eye holes and it gave him godlike power. So it's up to you and Trover to save the universe because somehow it's your fault that the guy stole your dogs. At the beginning of the review, I said that the Rick and Morty style of humor doesn't work here, and it doesn't. This was a very large selling point for the game, and that it was Justin Roiland working on it. So you were kind of being told that you're going to get that Rick and Morty type of humor, that really dark and insulting humor that laughs at the abyss. One of the running gags of Rick and Morty is that the characters will ramble on about the same topic and it doesn't really go anywhere with it. For example, here's a line from Rick and Morty. I'm the one who's going to say it because I don't want to get content ID claimed and I'm going to clean up the language because, well, I don't need YouTube taking what little ad revenue I get from this. Because it's not content ID friendly or whatever they want to use for an excuse. In the episode when Rick transfers his mind into a younger clone to hunt vampires, Morty says this to Summer. Well then, get your stuff together. Get it all together and put it in a backpack. All of your stuff, so it's together. If you gotta take it somewhere, take it somewhere. You know, take it to the stuff store and sell it. Or put it in the stuff museum. I don't care what you do, you just gotta get it together. Get your stuff together. Now there's pauses between certain lines, they're stammering, the joke is that they're hammering in a point that the character is making, and only a few characters do this. Mostly Rick and Morty. 
Any other character that may do this will only be on screen for maybe a few seconds. In Trover Saves the Universe, almost every single character does this, and it wears the joke out, and it keeps going longer than it should. Because this is a game. It can't take advantage of cutting out the nonsense as a task is fulfilled. Another aspect of Rick and Morty is that the characters like to dump on each other. Rick does it because he's the smartest man in the universe and doesn't care about anything but himself and won't do anything unless it will benefit him. Rick dumps on Jerry the most because Jerry is the opposite of Rick. But there's generally a reason as to why a character is dumping on someone. The dumping is a retaliation and there is a reaction to being dumped on. In Trover, Trover's boss dumps on him and then Trover either dumps on you or the characters that you meet. But the dumping on isn't all that funny because there's very little reason for it, which makes the Rick and Morty style of humor fall apart. Because there's no foil or opposite to warrant being dumped on, as we don't learn about the characters, there's no Jerry or Morty in the game to be the opposite of Trover. The wacky side characters are on screen for far too long, so they go from being funny to annoying. These two elements, needing to constantly reposition the camera because it's treated as a character that needs to be teleported from spot to spot, and the constant jabbering of the characters, makes this game go from just a standard action platformer to an intolerable action platformer. I think even the hardest of hardcore Rick and Morty fans, and I mean the ones who got mad at McDonald's for not having enough Szechuan sauce, who went raging on Twitter Rick and Morty fans, would have a hard time enjoying this game. And it's only four hours long. Maybe it's because Dan Harmon didn't have anything to do with it. Maybe he's the rock that keeps Justin Roiland in check like how Harold Ramis had a reign in Dan Aykroyd's ideas for the first Ghostbusters movie. And if you look at it from just what it is and remove all the jokes and the constant jabbering, being an action platformer, it's boring. There's no challenge to it at all. Collecting the green power babies is not hard, but the writing and how it interacts with the game makes it a lot worse and makes you waste your time. There's this one part where a guy says he'll activate a secret staircase if you move his boxes from his garage to the house next door's garage. So you do it. Then he says he wants them out on the front lawn. So you do that. Then he says he wants them on the roof so you could try that but the boxes slide off. At that point that's when you realize you're supposed to build a staircase with the boxes. So pretty much the game is playing a joke on you. Then you go about your way, only to be confronted by the character at the end because he wants the boxes back in his house, and if you do it, you get a green power baby. So this entire time, the game was playing a joke on you. You are the butt of the joke. Now, I wouldn't mind this, but it's the fact that it wasted so much time to get to that point. And I get the whole anti-humor thing. That's what this is. It's anti-humor, but anti-humor doesn't work in games because the game is programmed. There's only so much that can be done. It's not like an Andy Kaufman act where the joke is the eventual end. A game, on the other hand, just keeps going because after the joke ends, it'll just repeat itself until you arrive at the next location. It ends because you made it end. And there is the rare occasion that comes around where you get to interact with a joke by saying yes or no. And what's really bad is at the end, the main bad guy monologues about his one true love. Almost the entire time you're confronting him. And because it repeats itself so much, it gets stuck in your head. I think the one thing that could have improved the gameplay itself would be instead of constantly moving the chair from node to node and up or down, to have the right analog stick move you in the chair and then have enemies target you more than Trover since you are the one controlling him, so it's you that needs to avoid enemy attacks while you control Trover to protect you. It would have at least added some challenge to the game where you fight the clones of the bad guy, but because they didn't do that, this game is just bad and bad. Boring. Don't spend any more than $10 on this game, and it's not even worth that. This game is boring, and with its annoying dialogue, it makes it an unbearable experience. Stay away from it.